You know, I, I shared uh, a similar quote to that during the week. Actually, that would be yesterday. I, I shared a similar quote, so I'm here repeating it, which is one by um, Ava Eka. He says, remember, either you control your money or it will control you, right? You know, and, and that's a big negates what we popularly say when we use the word that money is neutral. Yes, in a sense, money is neutral when it comes to character, right? It's not going to necessarily give you the character you don't have, right? In every one of us is both an angel and a demon, right? There is a demon in us, just as much as there's an angel in us, right? Another way of saying is, is that there is a lower level, lower personality, and there's a high personality in us. Another way of saying is there's a spirit and there's a flesh. We are capable of walking in any of those two, even though we are born again. We are capable of walking in the flesh. We are capable of walking in the, in the spirit. It all depends on which one we feed, which one we yield ourselves to, right? So that's where we come up. We're talking about kind of Christian, spiritual Christian. It's all talking about what you are yielding to. The Bible will say that whatever to what you yield yourself to, you become a slave, a servant of that thing, right? If you yield yourself in a servant position to money, you become a servant of money, right? But if you take your rightful position, right, as Lord, as, as king, as master over money, money will bow to you, right? And money will flow to you. Right, I know people talk about money comment, money comment. You know, it's a principle. It's not just a, a an affirmation. Yes, it's good to say the affirmation, but you need to understand the principle. Money will flow to the person who knows who has mastery over money. If you have mastery over money, money will flow to you. If you don't have mastery over money, money will go away from you, because going away from you is the way by which money becomes your master. You are always then ever chasing after money. Like the scripture would say, money has wings. If you chase after it, it will fly away. Because as the way it becomes master over you. But when you understand money, and you, have, you, you take the position of mastery over money, money will flow naturally towards you. And that will be some of the things we discussed this afternoon, how to get to that position. To get to a position where money flows to you. And not away from you. Right, let's go ahead. I, I broke that second quote down a bit, you know, in what I shared during the week. Uh, it seems a bit tiny here. I probably should have made this into two slides. Uh, for my sake, I'm going to, what do I do? Just to make it slightly bigger. And it will help other people also. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do a walk on the fly. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to, make this into two slides even while I'm on right now just so that everyone can see it and I can see it also um, I'm blessed to be using glasses um, uh, you don't think it's a blessing <laughs> it is <laughs> it is it is, <laughs> it is. Uh, we give thanks for all things yes all right, so that's going to make it clearer you know, than having it on one slide. All right, so just the repeating of the same things I had said before, right? It's, it's, it's just uh, money is a spirit. It has wings, right? It's, money has there's a life in money, right? Money is not ordinary. <laughs> there's a spirit behind money. And that's why God, Jesus would say that you have to choose one. You're either going to marry, worship God or worship money. Because money seeks worship. Money seeks to be worshipped. Money seeks to control. The spirit of money is a spirit that seeks to control. So that's why the Bible will say that the love of money is the root of all evil, right? And, and the word love there, which sometimes we, we misunderstand it because the spectrum. When you talk about love, is a spectrum, right? Just loving money is not wrong. But loving money in a position whereby you become a servant to money, that is where you have trouble. But if I love money in such a way that I am a master of money, I understand mastery of money, there's nothing wrong with that. Money is good. Money is of God, 
right? But money, when you have a wrong relationship to it, then that's where you have the mammon spirit that you have to contend with, right? So you have to always, you, you have to gain mastery over money such that money, you are bigger than money. You have to be bigger than money. If you're not bigger than money, money will lord it over you and money will not even come your way. You'll be, money will be scarce in your hand. The way to, for money not to be scarce in your hand is that you grow yourself, that yourself becomes bigger than money. That is what Jesus Christ was talking about when he says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you. Because the person you become when you seek God is a person that attracts goodness, that attracts riches, that attracts everything that you need, right? Prosperity is attracted. It is not pursued. It is attracted by the person you become. You become the person that can handle the prosperity. Prosperity will flow naturally to you. God's universe is created in such a way that it's the riches are attracted. They flow in the direction of the person that can pass it, that, um, that can handle it, and go away from the person that cannot handle it. If you cannot handle riches, it will not come to you to continuously be going away from you. So it's not about chasing after money. It's about building yourself, making yourself the person that attracts all the goodness that you need. When you build yourself, everything that you need will come naturally to you. Right, because that's the way God made the universe. That's why the way God created the world. Right. So the key thing is mastery, is not pursuing. When you gain mastery, everything that you need will flow towards your direction. Right. So still flowing along in, in, in this chapter, you know, talking about um uh To talking key, key thing about this this chapter, it's in terms of it talks about comparison because when we're related with our community with other people, the general temptation is that we want to compare ourselves to other people, right? And that is a defeatist, um, losing strategy. For as long as we're comparing ourselves to other people, we will always lose because we are created in comparison to always compare our, our weakness to the strength of other people. Nobody shows their weakness. Everybody tries to hide their weakness, right? So you don't necessarily, you're, nobody is shining their weakness towards you. So when you are comparing yourself to other people, what you are most often than not comparing is your own weakness. You are comparing to their strength. You always come short. You always come short, right? You always be defeated. You always have an inferiority complex or, or, or a superiority complex. Both of them are bad, right? Whether you are feeling inferior or you are feeling superior, they are weaknesses. They are not straight, right? We were created not to compare ourselves with other people. We were created to compare our own self to our own self, to what is it that I was created to do? Who am I? What is it that the master is going to judge me by? What is it that life is going to judge me by? How far am I along the path of becoming that? That is the winning strategy, right? It's not comparing yourself to other people. Again, the, the, the examination paper that was given to everybody is different. So if I'm, if I'm writing the same answer for number two that someone else is writing, I might, uh, mine, my, one of us is wrong, right? Our examination papers are different. So it's about me finding out who I am what I was created for and pursuing that and not be comparing myself with someone else because we, we have different clock, we have different program, we have different parts. Maybe that person will die in two years time, maybe 10 years time, 20 years time, right? So it doesn't matter how close, even two, twins are not, are not created the same way. Their destinies are probably <laughs> night and day apart. Right. All right. Let me just say. So key key thing when we talk about whether we enjoy our, our blessing or not, the thing that contends against our comparing our, our enjoying our blessing is, is our comparison. So we have to overcome comparing ourselves to other people. Rather, we have to know who we have and live up to that. Right. 
if we don't live up to that, then we begin to then uh, seek to uh, impress people, right? And that can come in one of two ways, right? They come in a place whereby you give up everything that you have or that you are keeping everything that you have and you're trying to show that you are bigger than other people.